Thought we would check in with Netflix and Queen Cleopatra. As you can see, things haven't gotten any better for them over on Rotten Tomatoes. Currently, the show sits at 15% rotten with 13 reviews and a 3% audience score went up. It was originally at 2. It is now at 3, so a couple more people came in and liked it. You know what's funny about this? It really shows you just how cowardly most critics really are when it comes to criticizing big Hollywood because none of them are reviewing this show. 13 reviewers actually came through and had the balls to review this series. And I'll give them credit, even the positive ones. I mean, at least they reviewed it. Isn't it their job to review shit? Why aren't they reviewing this show? I wonder. Remember Santa Inc.? They didn't review that show either. There weren't a lot of reviews for Velma as well. It's funny when these shows come out, how few people run in to review it. Like they're afraid to give it a bad review. So at least somebody has some integrity. I'll give them that. At least somebody came in and reviewed this. Even Salon.com reviewed it, even though they gave it a positive, because of course they did. Uh, The Times UK, Daily Telegraph, Times UK again, they reviewed it twice. Uh, The Spectator, Middle East Eye, Ready Steady Cut, What She Said, The Indian Express, Movies and Munchies, which is a YouTube channel, it would appear, Stuff.co, and Decider. Who else is on here? Daily Telegraph, Movie Nation, that's it. Where's Variety? Where's Deadline? Where's Hollywood Reporter? Where are all these big access media sites? Because they review all kinds of stuff. You think they would have ran in to review this. But no, they're too cowardly to review this. They're cowards. So I just wanted to point that out. You know, I'll even cut Salon.com credit for, for reviewing it. Because at least they did. Where are all the reviews for this shit? Where are the reviews for this shit? Where are they? I just think it's a question worth asking. Now, I wanted to show you some early streaming numbers that we have for the show. Worst show ever, Queen Cleopatra debuts to a miserable 20.2 million streaming hours, 2% Rotten Tomatoes audience score, Netflix weekly rankings for May 8th through the 14th. Woo, that is bad. Now, what's funny is we didn't have any kind of hours or anything, but we did get to see where the show was on the top 10. And what was funny was when the show came out, it debuted at number 4 out of 10, and then it kept falling off, and I think by now it's off of their their top 10s, which is pretty damn sad, I got to be honest. Yeah, I'm looking at Flix Patrol right now. It's not in there. Top movies, not in there. Top TV shows, not in there either. Queen Charlotte is. Uh, That looks like another uh, history-changing show, but that's not the show we're talking about today. Today, we're talking about Queen Cleopatra. So, let's go over this a little bit. Having arrived on Netflix with what Forbes determined was the lowest Rotten Tomatoes score ever, 2%, now up to 3 For a show or movie garnering at least 5,000 rankings, four-part original miniseries, Queen Cleopatra predictably tanked in its first five days on Netflix, capturing only 20.2 million viewing hours for the week of May 8th through 14th. That is sad and pathetic. That is sad and pathetic. Congratulations, Jada Pickett-Smith. And like they point out here, it just it doesn't work for anybody. It's too soapy for serious history fans, and it's not enough soap for viewers who like juicy historical dramas. You, you made nobody happy. Nobody happy with this show. 
And uh, Netflix just continues to lose money. I do wonder, how long could they keep doing stuff like this with these little vanity projects? Because, you know, Disney Plus not doing too well, but you have other competition that is really strengthening their position, particularly uh, Warner and their Max app. I, I hate that name. I wish they just kept HBO Max. You've got them tightening up. Uh, who knows what Disney's looks like when they combined ESPN, Hulu, and Disney Plus into the one app or whatever they're going to call it. Amazon is a silent threat. Don't discount them because, I mean, it literally comes free with Amazon Prime. And everything is on there. If you can't get it on there, you can sure as hell buy it. So I, I don't know. Netflix, the only thing they have is their original content. And I got to be honest, outside of documentary, real legit documentaries, not garbage like this, uh, outside of those documentaries and their comedy specials, their scripted shows are shit. All of them, 95%, 90% are all woke as hell. Don't really quite get the game plan here, but they just keep doing it. And I just keep laughing because every time they do it, what happens? It falls off the charts. None of their little rage bait attempts work. They don't get anybody to come in and watch their shows. They just end up failing and falling off the rankings. I mean, look at this chart that they screen capped and put in this article. Here it is right here at number seven. Queen Cleopatra. Weeks in top ten. One. <laughs> one. <laughs> one week. <laughs> oh, oh, that's bad. Kung Fu Panda sits in there for three weeks, though. I guess this would only be under TV, so they're going to put that under TV, not film. I guess that makes sense. It wouldn't be a non-English either. So that's it. Just TV English. One week. Because like I said, it debuted at number four. And then it started to drop down the top 10. So, yeah, it fell right off that cliff. Fell right off of that cliff. Nobody watched it. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about all of this in the comments below. If you would, please like, subscribe, share the video. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit that notification bell. Check out my Rumble and my Locals. And as always, I will see you on the next one. Peace. Peace. Make sure to check out my locals. There's a link in the description. It's a fun community that I'm trying to build over here. If you don't want to support me on YouTube, you can come over here. None of that money goes to YouTube. You also can just come over here for free. But if you are a supporter over here, I do plan on doing an extra live stream once a month and throwing links to the supporters so you can actually come on and have a supporter live stream with me. Also, it's a good place to catch all of my content. You don't have to worry about notifications like YouTube. They'll definitely work over here. So come check out my locals.